All right, man, you know what we're going to talk about today is, um, what are we, we going to talk about? We're going to talk about Bitcoin maximalism. Um, there is a, I, I think, I think it's actually a growing movement. I think, uh, this was a fringe movement at, a, at some point in time because, you know, the altcoins would come out and they would do all these amazing tricks. Everybody thought it was so cool. And, um, you know, like, uh, like, uh, smart contracts, right? With Ethereum and whatnot. And then more coins started coming out after that. And, you know, they offered a bunch of different, um, features to their blockchain and projects and project goals and things that were much different than Bitcoin and Ethereum. And, um, Bitcoin maximalism seemed to be a far off idea because um, people were thinking like you know all Bitcoin does is transact like what the you know who cares right and what's what's the big deal with that right and look at this other coin that could do whatever you know and the main one is Ethereum but then you have like a bunch of other like just dumb coins like once Ethereum came out and. It had all these other features on it uh, and it said all these other goals and, and project roadmaps and whatnot other coins started to also come out you know like doge and like some other coins you know well the idea of forking chains and things like that became like whoa i didn't know you could do that let's do that let's fork it you know light came light coin come out, came out and you know that was instant transactions right like extremely fast um using a, a copy of the Bitcoin blockchain and whatnot, right? So, um, so Bitcoin maximalism was really not that crazy big, right? Especially when people were like, you know, look at all these things other coins could do. But now, as we see kind of the longevity of these other coins, right? Um, and the project roadmaps... And the failures of these other coins, Bitcoin maximalism has become, you know, more prevalent. And what Bitcoin maximalism is, is basically like there's literally no other coin but Bitcoin that you should be buying. You know what I mean? And I understand why I, why they say that. I get it. And I agree with a lot of the reasons why they say that. But, you know, I think that they're very limited in the scope of the variety of activity people want to engage in, you know, it's just that simple, right? People want to do more things using this amazing technology. That's it. Like plain and simple Bitcoin, great, fantastic store of value, best store of value ever. Uh, awesome monetary policy, you know, uh, structurally stable, uh, decentralized leadership, etc., etc., etc. It's great. I think it's like the money. You know what I mean? Like, it, like the U.S. dollar was the money. Nah. Now, it's Bitcoin was the money. Gold was the money. Nah. Now it's Bitcoin that's the money, right? And I get it. And I and I think that's for sure what Bitcoin is is the money. But, bro, these other coins, you know, maybe aren't so good at being money. They're not. They're not as good at, at, at being money as Bitcoin is, but they do all this other stuff really well. You know, like I, I personally, I don't want smart contracts on the Bitcoin blockchain. I don't want that. You know what I mean? Uh, I don't want fancy schmancy stuff on the Bitcoin blockchain. Like if there was no upgrade ever on the Bitcoin blockchain, it would be great. I think privacy, you know, private transactions on the Bitcoin blockchain would be great. But now that we have lightning and lightning is literally instantaneous, just moves super quick and cheap. There's nothing more I want. I don't want anything. And that's just me. I'm just saying from, from me personally, there's nothing more I want for, uh, you know, for Bitcoin than that. Like they don't have to upgrade it for the next hundred years. You know, obviously they should upgrade the security, which they do from time to time is upgrade layers of security as, uh, you know, uh, better security becomes available. And that's great about having, you know, a blockchain with a consensus algorithm that you know developers can you know pitch ideas and the entire community like more than 90 percent of the community needs to agree in order for it to move forward right like that's a that's an amazing standard and um 
you know, it really makes sure that I's are dotted and T's are crossed. But uh, Ethereum, just the Ethereum smart contracts of me being able to set up a very complicated pay structure uh, and pay schedule and build it into an immutable ledger that's distributed digitally around the world like that's a, that's fantastic you know say goodbye to escrow accounts you know what i mean say goodbye to middlemen merchants uh you know people doing funny business on craigslist or wherever else you know uh you can say goodbye to a lot of things because now you have a trustless system that operates in a in a fiduciary capacity to both uh, the buyer and the seller or you know however many parties are engaged in whatever kind of contract right so and that's great it's fantastic um you know you have other coins like uh uh like gaming coins like omi right omi is an nft platform but you're going to be able to use items you know that are found in a game you know what i mean cross game now right like if you had the the hammer of apy you know what i mean and and it earns you coin every time you wield it right uh, in a game or something like that and you had it in Super Mario's blockchain version and you but you got it you earned it in that game that's yours if you wanted to bring it into some other game you could do that you know what I mean if the game permitted it right like you could you could bring it in there you the fact that you earned that in the game is tight because now it's yours now <laughs> now because this is a uh, uh, an item that was earned in a game. It becomes valuable, and someone can sell it. Whoa! Ho, ho, ho. Someone can sell a valuable item earned in a game for money. My guy, you know what I mean? That's amazing. Uh, there was a project called Gollum. Uh, sorry, in Gnosis. Sorry, Gnosis. And it was gonna be a world supercomputer, dude, where you can batch calculate, batch process, batch render using the internet and, you know, uh, through a secure pathway via the blockchain um, to access a lot of computers. You pay for that use of the their computing power, but it was a supercomputer, you know what I mean? And Ethereum is kind of like, that's part of its goal. And I guess, you know, to a degree it's there. Uh, but you know that was that was its uh, its goal as a project, right? Um, v chain, like I I don't want Walmart to store RFID gateway information on the blo Bitcoin blockchain. It's just going to clog it up. Why would we do that? Why don't we put it on V chain? V chain is a fantastic use case for being able to track where products came from. Was there a bad batch of bananas here sold at this Rayleigh's? Great. Let's find out where it came from because we need to throw away everything that came from that farm. Boom, instantaneously. You know what I mean? Uh, whoever is in, term, uh, in, in charge of you know, quality control or you know, um, the Department of Health or whatever, literally just needs to boop, boop, do, 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 doesn't even need to leave their desk, could probably do it on their phone, on the fly, in, on a plane, and just look up exactly where it came from and then begin to distribute it messages. You know, for people who may be linked to those products in terms of information channels, you know, posting on the block blockchain itself under the transactions for those gateways. You know what I mean? Hey, if your da 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 was, you know, this ID, blah, 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 boom, it's poisonous. You know, like these are the things that you can do with blockchain. And I, I wouldn't want that to happen on the Bitcoin blockchain. I don't want that. You know, IOTA was a great idea man and you know um i don't think it's gonna happen anymore i think it's done i think the guy's just money grabbing right now but maybe some other uh uh some other project some other developer can create something similar but what, what iota was gonna do was you know have your items talk to each other you know why at the, at the gas station do i have to put in my card and do all that stuff why can't i just pump the gas and my car which is linked to my bank account you know pays for or my crypto account my crypto wallet pays for the gas to the pump why do we need the cashier there to do that why do i need a payment system to do that when they could just talk to each other as soon as i pull up recognize each other via near field communication technology 
things like that. You know what I mean? IOTA was dope for that. Uh, and, or it could have been anyway. It's not, it's not, you know, whatever. But I'm just saying, like, there's, there's like hella use cases for crypto, you know, the big, the blockchain in the way that it exists right now that, um, you know, can prove to be like really awesome for humans <laughs> in the future. And, I, that's why I like I understand Bitcoin maximalism and I agree in terms of you know Bitcoin being the best coin for the money part of it as money be- best coin ever right best currency ever nothing better but everything else man like you know I wouldn't want it done on the Bitcoin blockchain and, and that's where maximalists begin to lose me you know a lot of ma- maximalists they talk about how these are a bunch of crap coins like every coin is a crap coin because it's not functioning perfectly you know but and you know it very may well be that right but it's doing a much more difficult task than or you know i I don't want to say a much more difficult task but it's doing tasks that have more complication than simply you know i send this to you you send this to me right i'm not just updating accounts on the, on the blockchain anymore there's a bunch of actions that need to be executed in a programmable way on digital software that's also using a secure uh, pathway and gateway in order for you know these things to occur right and and with that like we got to take take a little bit of time to get it right you know what I mean like there's gonna be some things going on that are gonna be you know mistakes and errors and flaws and whatnot you know what i mean and then they got to get fixed but you know i'm not tying my life savings into a smart contract on ethereum (laughs) or maybe i will one day i don't know but i'm not doing that you know what i mean i'm not i'm not tying my life savings to an iota tangle you know uh uh what's it called you know communication between the gas pump and my car you know what i mean i'm not doing that i'm not doing that so what's it called um when you have things like that, it's going to take time, man. And But it's not like we're going to, I'm going to lose out because this project doesn't do well. I'm going to lose like all my funds and everything. I mean, unless I was gambling on the project. Other than that, you know, these projects are not meant to store tons of value. You know, so you got to put all these things in perspective, like, um, you know, the market cap of coins. You know, why, why do they exist? And what should their market cap be? How much liquidity is in, in the markets for these coins and why you know what i mean like why would it be like that we're we're so we're very close to like adoption on the speculative investment side and even on you know uh the day-to-day peer-to-peer payment side we're very close to adopt like mass adoption in that regard but we're extremely far extremely far yo you if you're watching this video we're so far so 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 far from uh you know mass adoption in terms of practical use cases for the blockchain not that they're not there they're there right but people are just trying to wrap their head around dude how can we use this as money what are you talking about what money Uh, 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 you know they're doing that when you talk to them about bitcoin as money and so if you can't talk to them for Bitcoin and Ethereum or any other crypto as money, which is like the most basic way to use this stuff, you know, then it's going to be even harder for them to grasp it, you know, to use as much anything else. And until then, until we cross that threshold where, um, you know, people are very much uh, aware of the money part and they're open to it and they understand how it works and whatnot. You know, until we cross that threshold, uh, I think it's going to be a little difficult to, you know, get everybody to do some of the other stuff. If you look at El Salvador, though, El Salvador, look, they got Burger Kings, Pizza Huts. They got, you know, dollar stores. They got you name it, like all that stuff. They got the same stuff we got. Right. They were using the U.S. dollar as a reserve currency there. That That was how they were making payments. You know what I mean? To each other and whatnot. Um. They are now, all those companies I just mentioned, Pizza Hut, Taco Bell, 
you know, uh, Walmart, uh, you know, you name it. Everybody I just mentioned, all those big corporations I just mentioned, meant, uh, uh, just mentioned, because policy drove the economic transformation to accept Bitcoin. The markets adapted, the corporations adapted, and now they are taking Bitcoin transactions on a daily basis, customer per customer, as little as a dollar's worth of transactions. They're referencing the global markets on pricing, you know, to determine the exchange rate at the time of Bitcoin. And everything, it just happens seamlessly, dude. It just happens seamlessly. You know what I mean? Um, this is, this is, look, if you think, if you think Bitcoin cannot be used, you're just not paying attention to El Salvador. That's it. You're just, you're, 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 you're committing to a willful ignorance about, you know, El Salvador and the fact, utter fact, gas, food, clothes, shelter, rent has to be taken in Bitcoin. You know what I mean? Well, mortgage payments are taken in Bitcoin there. You know, if you don't understand all that's happening, right? Transaction fees are at an all time low. Remittance fees are at an all time low. People have more money to spend. People, as the price of Bitcoin goes up, see an increase in the net value of their savings in El Salvador. Never happened before. That has never happened before. They've never had a, nobody has ever had a savings account where they've, they've seen a net increase in the value of that savings account in less than a year. It's never happened. You know what I mean? Just a regular old savings. Che uh, not even that. A, a checking account. And I call it a checking account because you could use that wallet to go pay for stuff right then and there. So forget the savings part. Checking account. Their checking accounts are growing in value as they have money locked in there that they're willing to spend, you know? And so, I mean, a little company, I mean, a little country like El Salvador making this jump and seeing every single day people posting receipts of how they paid for this in Bitcoin. That, I bought J's in Bitcoin. I bought, you know, and this knife in Bitcoin. I bought a battery for my car in Bitcoin. You know, this is happening now every day, bruh. This is not, this is not crazy. And so, you know, to think it won't happen here, I think that you are sadly mistaken. So, so my two cents, man. Bitcoin maximalism, its merits, and I think some of its drawbacks, um, and, you know, adoption and whatnot. So, yeah, man, love you. Be safe. Peace.